This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spades. In this bulletin, Major General Chiochi Conrote sworn in as president. Military denies any interference with police work. And Fiji Roads Authority treads carefully to save critical infrastructure. Fiji has a new president, Major General Chiochi Konrote. The country's first non-Itauke president was sworn into office today, witnessed by family, friends and the executive branch of government. Maggie Boyle reports. Blessing a president, Major General Chiochi Konrote swearing in ceremony accorded a multi-faith prayer. The career military officer today taking the oath of his most significant appointment to date as the commander-in-chief. I, Chiochi Konrote Konrote, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Fiji according to law. And I will obey, observe, uphold, and maintain the constitution of the Republic of Fiji. So help me God. Prior to this appointment, Kondrote was the Minister of Employment, Productivity, and Industrial Relations in the Fiji First Government and has served in the military since 1966. A distinguished soldier, he was the UN Assistant Secretary General Force Commander UNIFIL in Lebanon from 1997 to 1999. President Kondrote has also served in the diplomatic corps as Fiji's High Commissioner to Australia and Ambassador to Singapore. The Rotuman-born president was also government's special representative advisor to the Council of Rotuma. It's the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. Major General Chiochi Kanusi Konrote officially takes up his presidency today and is the first non-Itoke president to do so. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. She never once expected or dreamt of becoming the first lady. Sarote Konrote is just that after her husband was sworn in as the new president for Fiji. Eleanor Turangaiviu spoke with Mrs. Konrote after the official ceremony this morning. Her husband's appointment as the president came as a surprise for her. However, first lady Sarote Konrote says he has worked hard and deserves the accolade. I'm happy for him because um, after all the hard work, I think, I think he deserves it. The First Lady admits she will have a busy schedule with this new responsibility, something she is ready for. It's okay with me because we're so used to entertaining when he was first commander in Lebanon. We used to entertain um, some prime ministers and, uh, and heads of state and uh, even bishops when, yeah, when we were in Lebanon and then from there to Canberra. For the Rutuman community, Konrote swearing in is significant as he is the first son of Rutuma to hold the president's post. Konrote's friend Dr. John Fatiaki says it marks a new chapter for them. Mr. Konrote will make a wonderful president. Uh, for those of us who know him, he's humble, he's uh, a man of the people like our past president, and I have no doubt that he'll do the country proud. Plymouth Ratu William Ekatonivere believes the new president is more than capable of fulfilling the role. He's a gentleman, he's very down to earth, he's a good natured person and he's a respectful person. And I think he'll uh, be on par with the outgoing president, you know, they have the same values. They share the same sentiments, you know, and they are for the people. They're very people, people loving. Businessman Hari Punja believes Konrote has the qualities of a good president. I have known uh, Mr. Konrote for a, very, for a long time. Uh, I used to know him very well when he was a high commissioner in uh, Australia. And um, yeah, he's been my, we have had a morning walk together many times. So he's, he's a great gentleman. 
He's a very, very fine gentleman. Um, and I'm sure he's going to be excellent uh, uh, president of the country. Uh. Conrote starts his three-year term as president today. Illinois is standing by live outside Government House in Suva. Eleanor, there were many other dignitaries at the ceremony. What's the general sentiment to the presidential appointment? Well, Jackie, judging from the reactions after the swearing-in today, I can safely say that support for the new president is huge. People we spoke to today basically shared the same sentiments that he is the right choice. Some even compared his nature to that of the outgoing president, Ratu Epelinele Tikau, saying that they are both very outgoing, very down-to-earth people, and that they love to meet people. And this was evident after the swearing-in ceremony today, in which the new president tried his very best to shake everybody's hand and even just to, even just to have a word with those in attendance. And just to conclude with Jackie, uh, speaking earlier to the Tui Madhuwata Ratu William Ekato Nivere, he stated that Chochi Konrati is now the new president and that all we can do now is just to rally our support behind him. Jackie. That's so true. Thanks so much for that, Eleanor. Commodore William in Porto has refuted claims by former police commissioner Ben Hunaval that the military interfered with police. The commander RFMF is responding to allegations that military interference with policing matters was an ongoing issue for Hunaval, who led to his resignation earlier this week. Maggie Boyle tells us more. The head of the Republic of Fiji military forces today clearing the air. Commodore William in Porto says it's inconceivable that the military would interfere in police matters. Look, I'm, I'm not too sure what he's referring to. But the last thing we want is for us to interfere. That's the last thing we want to do, is to interfere in the in police work. They have a, a, a job to do, uh, and they, we expect them to do it professionally. We have our, our, our own role to perform, and we need to do that properly. Our, our roles complement each other. Former Commissioner of Police Ben Hunaval told Australian media that the military interference with policing was an ongoing issue for him. FBC News approached Hunaval for an on-camera interview, which he declined. However, he told us he was not happy with the military's tactics. The former Compol has also been quoted by overseas media, saying that the military stopped police from arresting an officer wanted for sexual assault charges. Um, um, I do not know what he's referring to. We, we haven't talked. He hasn't complained to me about it also. So, uh, Do you expect to see him before he leaves the country? I know he uh, will be doing handover with the incoming uh, acting commissioner soon. Um, uh, that's for them to, you know, to work out. RFMF Land Forces Commander Lieutenant Colonel Sitovin Ngili Hawk has been appointed the acting commissioner of police. He told FBC News that he will comment on the issue next week. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Consumer Council of Fiji says people should be careful when buying a so-called window cleaning product. The council claims people have suffered after buying one such product from a Suva retailer. Two people have come forward claiming they have been burnt by this windscreen cleaning product called anti-rain. Erwin Skiba suffered skin burns, swellings and blister. There is a continuous absolute denial from this particular trader, color market, to, to take any responsibility in this case and uh, that's why we are sitting here to, uh, to make the public aware. There is a warning label saying avoid skin and eye contact but nothing about what's in the bottle. Ajesh Chand also bought anti-rain and says he and his wife suffered the same ordeal. I can't stand. So next Monday morning, I came to Suva to see one private doctor in uh, Namandi Heights. So she treated me there, then I went to Kala Market and told them, see, I bought it this, this item and this is the cause. The Consumer Council of Fiji has taken up the matter and Chief Executive Premla Kumar says these victims deserve redress. I think, uh, first of all, any company that sells a product, they got to be responsible because they have better knowledge about the product. They know precisely how uh, anti-rain was made, you know, what was mixed to create that particular product. Consumer doesn't know. The so company selling anti-rain, Kala Market Limited in Samambula Suva says the product is nothing more than a common household cleaning product and not a chemical. 
Director Harun Hussain writes that the company denies any allegations against it and any liability whatsoever. Shriti Prasad, FBC News. After the break, Diwali brings good cheer and festivities around Fiji. Mera chand mujhe aya hai nazar, ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar. Chaya hai nasha mere aakho par, ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar. Reh jai na piyasa mera piyar, mere baaho me bhar de mera yaar, ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar, ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar. है दोस्तों मैं हूं जितेन शांडिल आप रात के बाद हमारे साथ अब रफ्तार प्रोग्राम में तीन से लेकर रात सात के बीच शामिल हो सकते हैं मिर्ची एफएम एट्स हॉट People traveling along the Nasori Suva corridor in the Nasinu area can expect road closures as the Fiji Roads Authority carries out road widening. The FRA needs to protect critical water pipes from damage and will divert traffic when necessary. Akusita Tale has more. This junction in Nasinu Road houses a water main which supplies most of Suva. Road works here will be slow as Contractors China Railway 1 works around water authority assets. Traffic both ways will be disrupted because engineers need to secure this slope in order to support the road widening as the King's Highway is extended into a four-lane network. Drivers should expect traffic delays. There is a reason. The work is going on underneath and uh, on the slope beside the road. And in order to um, protect that from vehicle vibrations, we have to shut the lane. At the moment, FRA is working with the Water Authority of Fiji as three of its main pipes that supply Valley Levu, Flagstaff, Turek and the Greater Suva area are buried underneath these sections of the road. Khan has given an assurance that there will be no water shutdown as the two agencies try to minimize any risk of damaging the pipes. We've looked at um, all the valves and things along this part of the network so that if there was any particular issue with the slope and you know there's always a risk that you know this work is risky and something can happen we have contingency planned with WAF for any emergency repair that would need to take place if um, the slope stability was compromised it's a tricky portion for the FRA because the buried pipes are right next to the 8 meter slope that needs to be strengthened Khan says this has been the most challenging part of the Suva road widening project this is a prime example of where we're having to close a lane and the public can't see any work happening because it's all going on underneath and behind on the slope and they're going to drive by and they're going to feel like they're inconvenienced because all this um, lane has been shut and they're going to be delayed. Water Authority engineers will monitor roadworks and advise the Roads Authority on how best to work around the critical infrastructure. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Two teenagers accused of murdering 29-year-old Reginald Singh appeared in the Nandi Magistrates Court this afternoon. 19-year-old Ratumbuli Navengutuilangi and a 16-year-old juvenile are charged with a count each of theft and murder. The two are alleged to have murdered Singh between the 6th and 7th of this month before stealing his kind Sambeto Nandi. Both were denied bail. Nathing Utuilangi will be remanded at the Natambo prison, while the juvenile will be remanded at the Suva Boy Center. The case will be called in the Lautoka High Court for the 18th of November. It was a night of lights, colour, food and fireworks. Diwali was celebrated throughout Fiji yesterday, bringing together people from all walks of life. Eleanor Trangaiviu took to the streets last night and caught up with those celebrating. Fireworks filled the skies and many filled the streets and homes to partake in the festivities. Lights, colours, sweets and delighted faces all around. The essences of Diwali, the start of a new year. 
see the celebrations around you. It's it's a testament to the to the uh, progress we've shown as, as a multicultural society, and that's what Diwali really stands for. Um, the spirit of if Diwali is um, uniting uh, and and moving forward with a positive mindset. The homes and families FBC News visited last night did not disappoint. For many, the preparation was hectic. Some took days to put everything together, but in the end. It was all worth the effort. It has been a planning for six months. It's not easy planning for Diwali, uh, getting the preparations done. The family has to sit together, decide on how the lightnings and the prayers and everything will be going through. But it has been a strenuous process for the last six months. For Hindus, Diwali is an opportune time for reflection and celebration of the triumph of good over evil. With the 2015 Diwali celebration now behind us, and as we look forward to another celebration next year, the true message of Diwali should not depart from us. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Reviving traditional culture is one of the reasons for the Lomai Viti Festival this year. The mekis, food and handcraft that the Lomai Viti province is known for are being showcased at the Suva foreshore. Savaira Tamboa has more. <laughs> Lomaiviti is made up of 12 districts and each has a different traditional way of life. Rokotui Lomaiviti, Penichameni Tokandundua says they are targeting youth from the province since most of them have moved to urban areas and knowledge of their identity is slowly diminishing. Uh, knowing very well that uh, Lomaiviti uh, is scattered all around and most of our people are in Suba. So reviving this is uh, very interesting, mostly to them, uh, the people in Suba and Muslim, and where they can uh, improve their network. Where the people from the villages bring in the raw materials and those in Suba prepare the items. Tokanduondo says while the festival is a good way to reach out to people, they are taking a more serious approach in preserving culture. It's been included in the provincial meeting in 2016. This is also included in the Bosnia Sana. Uh, as from next year, this will be part of the menu uh, for both meetings. The one that will be held in Levuka for the development meeting and the one that will be held in November also. More than $100,000 is expected to be collected during the four-day event. Sabera Tamboa, FBC News. The Caribbean Alliance from Australia is in Fiji to help people with hearing problems. The team from the Australian-based non-government organisation was in Nandi School for Special Education yesterday, handing out hearing implements to students. <laughs> Caribbean Alliance trip to Fiji is a community outreach where they are giving away 1,000 free hearing aids to people who suffer from hearing impairment. Hearing aids aren't available in Fiji. We just felt that this week that we could um, help the general public. The team has been assisting the people of Fiji for the past 11 years. Caribe says the distribution was a success with lives being changed for many as they can now communicate well with their families and friends. Uh, almost 15 of our children are either partially or fully hearing impaired. And this is a great opportunity for them and together with the community of Nendi. And we are very excited because our school is able to provide uh, this facility for the public, for the people of Nendi through this Caribbean Alliance. The team will also be visiting Lautoka, Ba, Sabu Sabu and Lambasa. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Sports Now, here's Jamie. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up in sports and further movement in Cricket Fiji as CEO resigns and national coach Shane Jürgensen withdraws his earlier resignation. Details after the break.
The Vodafone Fiji Sevens extended squad lost two key players on its way to the Motherwater Provincial Youth Sevens final in Lambasa this afternoon. Donasio Ratumbuli and Amenoni Nasilisila were both stretched off the field in the semi final stages and rushed the hospital with injuries. Charlin Dautakadaka is in Lambasa and filed this report. Donasio Ratumbuli's form over the two days of competition at Subril Park made him a sure contender for the Rovers' position in the Dubai and Cape Town 7s next month. But this was short-lived after fracturing his leg in the semi-final against Warden's Gold. Uh, unfortunately, he suffered a double fracture of the lower leg. Um, it's a pretty bad injury, really. Um, and uh, he was in a lot of pain. And I uh, feel very sorry for him personally because he'll be out for a number of months now. So, you know, I wish him all the best. He's with some good medical care here. and. Um, yeah, it's a big blow because he was certainly nailed in probably for the starting starting slot in, in rover position. Aminoni Nasilasila was next on the injury list after copying a late hit on the way to scoring this try. We don't know to what extent that is. We know that there's no fractures at the moment. Um, but you also know with Fiji boys, you know, if they've had to go to hospital, then they don't, they don't go there unless there's something significant. So uh, I hope he gets cleared and that he might be able to be named in the 16 tomorrow. The injuries have forced Ryan to delay the naming of the reduced 16-member squad to tomorrow. With Nasila Sila and Ratu Bulli's absence, a big loss for the opening leg of the World 7 Series next month. Silent Odakataka, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, a combined warden side beat a combined national side 17-14 in a gripping final. Ryan opted to combine the two national sides for the final despite both teams winning their respective semi-final matches against Warden's Gold and Warden's Green. However, a number of key players were arrested in the final. Warden's claimed the $3,000 prize money for the win, while the national side donated its, its $1,500 runners-up prize money back to the organizers of the tournament, the Madhuwata Provincial Youth Committee. And as mentioned before the break, there's been more movement in Cricket Fiji with Chief Executive Inoke Lesuma resigning from his post, while National Coach Shane Jürgensen has decided to stick around in Fiji a bit longer. Rohit Deo has the details. Inoke Lesuma is no longer the CEO of Cricket Fiji. His resignation has been accepted and doubts cleared on rumours that he was not terminated. Cricket Board has accepted his resignation in a good will in a good will and good faith and there is no such things i'm again telling you the ceo was not terminated from cricket fiji or he was not been fired it was just a rumors was spread by some individuals the new acting ceo knows the job at hand is not easy but he's ready for the challenge cricket's in my blood well, after um, playing uh, cricket in here i went and played cricket in papua new guinea at the time uh, PNG was, uh, their level of uh, cricket was much, much higher than Fiji. Meanwhile, national coach Shane Jagensen, who had announced his resignation, will continue as mentor. I, I basically wrote that probably it's a, maybe a time for me to move on, but I've had some uh, personal thoughts around this. Uh, there was no official letter handed in, because um, I probably <laughs> didn't realise that was the way it had to be handled. Jagansen's first task is the Under-19 World Cup in Bangladesh next year. Cricket Fiji has climbed up the ladder in the past few years. With the changes taking place, hopes are high for brighter days ahead. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Westfield Boxing Promotions received a major boost today with Pizza King coming on board for its promotion next month. Eight bouts are scheduled for the night, with the main event being the heavyweight title bout between Peter Rongida and challenger Napoleon Taumo Peao. Pizza King gave a sponsorship of $4,000 for the event. Uh, yesterday I had given 25% uh, all to boxer, uh, boxers to prepare their uh, fight. And I had met all the boxers. They are uh, fit. They are waiting for only for 12 December to hop in the ring. The event will be held at Prince Charles Park in Nandi on the 12th of next month. In the next few days, Rewa, Nandi, Lautoke and Suva will wrap up preparations for the Pacific Football Cup in New Zealand next week. The tournament kicks off next Wednesday and the teams are expected to leave for New Zealand a day before. Meanwhile, national reps who returned from the Vanuatu tour yesterday have rejoined their district teams. Nandi had won the tournament in 2012 and 2013, while the New Zealand All-Stars won the title last year. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening.
Westpac Bank and Vodafone Fiji have launched the first ever bank account to mobile wallet integrated financial service in Fiji. This is to ensure safe and convenient banking. Vodafone Chief Executive Officer Pradeep Lal says this is an initiative that will benefit most of their customers. While using the new platform, customers need to dial star 149 hashtag to access this service. Before people had to uh, um, basically withdraw the money to top up the MPISA account, now sitting at home you should be able to top up your account um, or the MPISA account. So that makes it very, very convenient and it can happen any time of the day and night provided you have funds available in your bank account. People can also open new accounts at Westpac to access mobile banking services. Fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. It was a hot day all over with temperatures in most places crossing into the 30s. Suva and Savo Savo were close behind. More fine conditions tomorrow apart from some cloudy conditions and possible afternoon showers in the capital and in Savo Savo. And the further outlook is for Saturday. Occasional showers over the northern parts of the group, the eastern parts and interior of the other larger islands. Elsewhere, afternoon or evening showers. Southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas, moderate southerly swells. And recapping the main stories tonight, Major General Chiochi Conrote takes up office as president after he's swearing in today. Military denies any interference in police work and Fiji Roads Authority works around critical water pipes in Asinu as road widening project continues. To our poll question for this week, we're asking, are you happy with the massive reduction in VAT? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Bye for now.